Can Hashimoto switch to Graves disease? Can it switch from being hypothyroid to hyperthyroid? I'm going to answer that question for you. I'm going to explain how that could happen and why it matters and what it really is telling us about your particular condition. So let's get into it. All right, so let's start with the basics, okay? Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid condition, and if you're watching this, you probably have Hashimoto's. And primarily what it will do is it will create a situation of hypothyroidism, meaning your TSH is high, your free T4 is low, and you're not making enough thyroid hormones. Hence the definition, hypothyroidism. And it does that through an autoimmune mechanism. Uh, your immune system makes antibodies for stuff called uh, thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin. These antibodies, which are like little post-it notes, they direct your immune system to basically kill off the inside of your thyroid gland. And over time, you don't make enough thyroid hormones. And that creates a whole set of symptoms that are very classic, like fatigue, weight gain, depression, anxiety, uh, GI problems, hair loss, insulin resistance. And that's what Hashimoto's does via having low thyroid hormones. But Hashimoto's is also an inflammatory condition. In Hashimoto's, you get tested for that by doing thyroid peroxidase antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies. And here's the connection between Hashimoto's and Graves' disease. Those thyroid peroxidase antibodies, you can also find in people that have Graves' disease, okay? So what is Graves' disease? Graves' disease is a different animal from Hashimoto's. It is an autoimmune problem, but it's a little bit different. Graves' disease causes hyperthyroidism, meaning TSH is low and the free T4 is high. How does it do that? Well, in Graves, you have antibodies, but they're not antibodies that lead to destruction. In Graves, you have thyroid stimulating antibodies. They're antibodies that attach to the receptors on your thyroid gland for thyroid stimulating hormone. And when they attach there, they make your thyroid activate and produce hormones. So Hashimoto's is hypo mostly, and Graves is only hyper. Now, the reason I say mostly is because when Hashimoto's isn't well controlled, you can have little flare-ups where you get increased destruction inside the thyroid gland. And what happens is it dumps these hormones that are formed in the gland into the blood and you become temporarily hyperthyroid. But it's not from the Graves mechanism. It's because it's Hashimoto's and you're getting a flare-up. I'll explain it like this. If you imagine your thyroid gland is like uh, just a, a bunch of like grapefruits put together, right? A bunch of grapefruits. And each one of those grapefruits is making thyroid hormones. And if you cut one of those grapefruits open, there's all these little sections, right? Well, each one of those sections is making thyroid hormones. And what happens when you have a flare of Hashimoto's that can lead to hyperthyroidism is that the immune system, the army, let's say, goes in and it blows up one of these sections, right? Now, you know what happens when you dig into a section of grapefruit and the juice kind of flies out? Well, that's what happens. The thyroid hormones that are in there that normally are dripped out, they just dump out into the blood. And so that produces a lot more hormones in your blood. And you can temporarily have a TSH that's low and a free T4 is high. But before that, you were Hashimoto's, right? And it can vacillate. And that could be from day to day. That could be from week to week. But Hashimoto's does that. But that's different than the first question I asked, which is, can Hashimoto's transition to Graves' disease? And the answer is yes, it can. Uh, it's not super common, but it does happen. So when I see Hashimoto's patients and they're having these hyperthyroid symptoms, such as nervousness, anxiety, weight loss, blood pressure's up, they're sweaty, but I know that they have Hashimoto's diagnosis, we've got to check them for Graves' disease. So how do you check for that? Well, remember in Hashimoto's, we check for thyroid peroxidase antibodies, we check for thyroglobulin antibodies. Now in Graves' disease, what you check for is thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, Sometimes some labs will call that thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies, okay? Now, if that comes back as positive or high, then what you have is Graves' disease. Now, and from what my knowledge and what all the research shows, once you're Graves' disease, you don't go back to Hashimoto's, okay? Um, but it's a very important thing to know. So if you have a diagnosis of Hashimoto's and you are no longer feeling fatigue, depression, anxiety, but you're feeling kind of the opposite of that, it's time to get checked by someone who knows what to check for because Graves' disease is a more dangerous condition, to be honest. Uh, Graves' disease can cause uh, heart problems, it can cause eye problems, and Hashimoto's is bad, don't get me wrong, but Graves' is a little more emergent. So again, can Hashimoto's switch to Graves' disease? Yes. Can Graves' disease switch to Hashimoto's? Not really. Can Hashimoto's vacillate between hypo and hyper temporarily? 
without going to Graves' disease? Yes, because it's a different mechanism. Just remember, in Graves' disease, we've got thyroid stimulating antibodies, and in Hashimoto's, we have antibodies that lead to thyroid destruction, okay? I have a lot of videos on my channel about Hashimoto's, so make sure you're working with the doctor that knows the difference, knows how to test, and knows what to do if they find that you've got Graves' disease, because very often that's gonna need a, a certain type of medical management. There's not a lot of you know supplements and diet things you can do for Graves. There are some, but mostly it's usually medication management because it's a different animal than Hashimoto's. So, hope you guys found that helpful, and I hope you don't have Graves' disease. So, see you next time.